Hey everyone, I'm still pregnant. I'm 40 weeks and five days pregnant as of today. I am completely flabbergasted that I'm still pregnant. Um, with my daughter, I went into labor at 40 weeks and three days. She was born by 40 weeks and four days. I've never been this pregnant before. And I'm rapidly approaching 41 weeks. I'm really torn about the idea of having an induction, but I feel like I know too much as a midwife about the risks and benefits of induction, versus the risks and benefits of staying pregnant. And I really have no idea what to do. I'm, I'm really torn um, and I'm just gonna talk about why that decision is so difficult. So if you are someone who is approaching 41 weeks and you've been offered an induction and you don't know what to do, you're not alone. Welcome back to Every Mama's Midwife. If you're new, my name is Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom, and this is my second baby, and I did conceive this pregnancy via IVF. Routinely, I offer my patients induction at 41 weeks of pregnancy because there is an increased risk of stillbirth the further you go past 41 weeks. It's small initially, but it is statistically significant. It gets higher um, after 42 weeks, but working as a midwife, I will never, ever, ever forget um, a patient that I took care of when I was a student who came in for her scheduled induction at 41 weeks. She was much like me, um, just a little over 35. She didn't have any other risk factors. And the nurse came to grab me because she couldn't find heart tones when she came in for her induction. Her baby had been moving great the day before. And when she showed up for her indu induction, the baby didn't have a heartbeat anymore. I will never, ever, ever, ever forget that woman. And it's not like she did anything wrong. She followed all of the guidelines and the recommendations and that kind of stuff just haunts you when you're a healthcare provider. <sighs> and I know that doesn't happen very often. I know I've taken care of hundreds of moms who have gone past 41 weeks and gone on to have healthy babies, but not every single one of them. And there is a correlation with moms getting older and that risk of stillbirth being higher. The other reason why we offer induction after 41 weeks is the further you go past 41 weeks, the higher your risk of a C-section becomes. And part of the reason the prospect of a C-section is so terrifying to me is because even though I had a vaginal birth last time, I know consistently this baby has been measuring larger than my last baby, but also because I had complications with my placenta last time and I had to have a spinal to try and get my placenta out, they could never get me comfortable with a spinal. I could still feel everything, so they had to put me to sleep to get my placenta out. So I suspect if I had to have a C-section, I would have to go to sleep, and then I would not remember my birth, and I absolutely do not want that. I've had a really hard time connecting with this baby and this pregnancy, I think just because we did IVF and because I had three losses between my last baby and this baby, and I, I need to be present for birth. I need to feel it. I need to go through it to connect with this baby. I just don't want to, I don't want to miss that. And that's a, that's a really scary thought. That being said, I know inducing labor is not a surefire bet at avoiding a C-section. I've seen multiple times where we've intervened, you know, as a healthcare team in the patient's best interest and with the patient's consent, um, offered someone an induction and tried to get the ball rolling and then got into a place where we got stuck. Someone's water was broken. Um, their baby wasn't tolerating labor or for whatever reason we felt pushed into a C-section because as we intervened and as we followed that cascade of interventions, we just couldn't get someone into active labor. Since I'm planning a home birth, my options for those types of things are a little bit more limited. At my last membrane sweep, I've had five membrane sweeps at this point. My midwife said my cervix was three centimeters dilated, about 50% thinned out. Um, and the baby's head was about one centimeter above the skinniest point of my pelvis. So she could break my water. However, if she breaks my water and I don't go into labor, either I have to go to the hospital for Pitocin, which I'm not thrilled about that idea, or her other tool is castor oil. And we've talked about that before. I'll link that video here. I'm not really in love with that idea either. In the meantime, I'm trying to do absolutely everything I can to encourage labor. My husband and daughter and I went for a hike yesterday. We drove an hour away from home to go do our favorite hike and thought that maybe that would tempt fate and encourage labor, but nothing exciting happened. 
Um, today I did the miles circuit this morning, which is a series of exercises to try and encourage your baby to get their head to engage in your pelvis in a way that's going to be best for labor. You start by spending between 10 to 30 minutes, as much as you can tolerate, leaning forward with your knees spread. And the purpose of this is so if your baby's head is engaged in your pelvis in a way that's not ideal for labor, hopefully it gives them space to disengage and and come come out and then readjust. The second position is called exaggerated sims or exaggerated side lying, where you can lay on your side with your leg propped up and you can do either side or switch sides, whatever's comfortable. I tend to lay on my left side just because I'm prone to heartburn and I have the least amount of heartburn laying on my left side. But again, this opens up the pelvis and allows baby to move. And I definitely did feel like before doing that first step when I would sleep like this, I would feel the baby's head kind of grinding into my right hip. And after doing the first step, I didn't feel that anymore in this position. So I do think that could have been beneficial. And then after 30 minutes of that side lying position, you want to do variations in movement where you're opening your pelvis and creating a symmetry in your pelvis. So one foot up on a chair, creating a 90 degree angle and doing some movement or doing what we call the running start with the birth ball where you're kind of in a almost lunge position, like a runner getting ready to take off. Um, you can also do things like we've discussed before, like curb walking, walking sideways, going up and down the stairs. And you want to do this again for about 30 minutes. So this morning I did the full mile circuit and then we took a really long walk. Um, and while I did feel crampy during the walk, I'm not having any sort of consistent contractions. And it, it's been really frustrating because a lot of times I'll wake up in the middle of the night with one contraction and then I'll lay there for 20 minutes waiting to have another one and, and nothing happens. There's also a whole rabbit hole you can go down on the internet called spinning babies, where if you think your baby is malpositioned, there's different exercises you can do. Fortunately, one of my best friends is a home birth midwife and a spinning babies instructor. And so she came and did some spinning babies exercises with me a couple of days ago. But again, nothing really exciting has happened since then. And I feel like this is one of those situations where as a midwife, I just know too much because I don't really think my baby's head is malpositioned in my pelvis. Like ideally you want your baby to be face down and not looking face up towards your pubic bone. That being said, I pushed my daughter out looking face up towards my pubic bone without any problems. Um, but I also had a lot of back pain at the end of pregnancy with her. And I really haven't had that this time. So I don't get the feeling that my baby is OP or occiput posterior, posterior or sunny side up or malpositioned. Um, so it's like, well, am I not going into labor because my baby's head is not in the right position? Or is it just the fact that this is a totally normal time frame still to not have gone into labor? I am constantly telling first time moms, like you probably will go past your due date. Odds are you'll deliver between 40 weeks and three days and 40 weeks and five days, but there's still plenty of moms who are going to go to 41 weeks or even 42 weeks and, and have totally healthy babies. And it's just so hard to know what to expect because there could be nothing wrong. It's just that I haven't gone into labor yet. And so I, I don't, I don't want to rush my baby. And I know I'm not rushing my baby because we did IVF. We're a hundred percent sure of when we conceived. I know my baby is full term, but I don't want to try and induce labor if my baby's head is not in a great position and then have my baby get stuck and wind up with a C-section. And obviously I don't want to induce labor if the next day I would go into labor, but you, you just don't know. You have no idea when you're going to go into labor. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm, I'm totally shocked that I'm still pregnant at this point. I thought for sure I would go a little bit earlier this time. Um, and I can't believe that now I'm the most pregnant I've ever been. And, you know, my daughter had been born by this point. So to help me make my decision, um, tomorrow I'll be 40 weeks and six days. I do have an appointment with my midwife and I'm going to do a non-stress test. Um, this is part of the antenatal testing that I've talked about before in this video. I'll link it here in case you missed it. Just to make sure if you are going past your due date or if you're an older mom going past 39 weeks that your placenta is functioning well and your baby's getting enough oxygen, this will just entail putting a fetal heart rate monitor and a contraction monitor on my belly and keeping track of my baby's heartbeat for about 30 minutes. And that will let us know, does it look like the baby has a normal heart rate? Is the baby having accelerations in their heartbeat? Meaning that with, when they're moving, their heart rate jumps up. 
that's always reassuring. Are we not seeing any like drops in the heart rate? Like the cord is getting pinched. Like maybe there's not enough fluid. If we did see something like that, I would probably also do an ultrasound to check my fluid volume. And I may still ask for that. I haven't decided yet. Um, I have not done antenatal testing up to this point just because this baby is so active. I really haven't felt like I've needed to. Um, but at this point, I just want to make sure I'm doing my due diligence and doing what's best for my baby. So if there was anything remotely not reassuring about the non-stress test, or if we had an ultrasound that said, yeah, your fluid is getting kind of low, then I may be more inclined to request an induction. But I also don't know how long I want to give it. Last week when I talked to my midwife, I said, oh, I don't want to be pregnant past 41 weeks. But now that it's staring me in the face, I honestly don't know. I'm really not comfortable being pregnant past 42 weeks, but I don't know that I necessarily need to be induced right at 41 weeks. I have no idea. And I just keep hoping and wishing that my water will break or that I'll go into labor so I don't actually have to make that decision. I think that's one of the hardest things about motherhood is a lot of times you're faced with options for your child, even when they're still in utero, where you got to pick something and commit, even though you can't really know for sure what the best option is. And people are going to judge you and tell you that you made the wrong choice regardless of what you choose. But you just got to figure out what's best for you, what's best for your baby. And I have not figured out the answer to that yet. Obviously, I'll keep you guys posted. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell because I'll let you know what happens. But it's hard. It's a really difficult decision to make. Literally just last week, I was talking with a patient about it and she was getting tearful uh, because she didn't know what to do and she hadn't gone into labor yet and she didn't want to go past 41 weeks, but she didn't want to be induced. And now she's on my schedule tomorrow for a postpartum visit. And I can't tell you how jealous I am of her. Um, and I had a, another patient who was like my due date buddy. And I just saw her for a two-week postpartum visit. And it's just so, it's so hard to watch all of these women around you who are due at the same time have their babies already. Anyways, thank you for listening to me ramble. I hope this was helpful for someone. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Hopefully the next time I post a video, I have a baby in my arms. Thanks, guys.